Hello, future zinesters. I'm Dina Brown, the Emerging Trends Consultant at Idaho Commission for Libraries. I'm joined today by Gwen Hervishan, Associate Professor and Archivist at Boise State University's Albertsons Library. Say hello, Gwen. Hi, everyone. Don't know what a zine is or wanting to learn more? Well, you're in the right place. My colleague Gwen and I will be sharing a brief history of zines, the evolution of technology used to produce them, and how they connect to anchor standards and learning themes for elementary through secondary students. Let's get started. So first things first, some people see the word zine and think it's pronounced zine. So if you did too, don't worry, you're not alone, but it's actually pronounced zine as in magazine or fanzine. Zines are similar to magazines and fanzines, but the key is that zines are self-made and self-distributed publications. And so they're usually made without spending a lot of money and have a pretty small print run. All of these things mean that zines are a direct expression from the creator to the reader without financial motivation. And it also means that you can find zines about any possible topic you can imagine. Some zinesters choose to create zines in a series like issues of a magazine, but some people make zines just as a one-time publication. So really, you can think of zines as any kind of handmade publication made with the intention of reproducing copies for sharing without charge, or maybe just a really minimal charge. If a zine has text, it can be typewritten or handwritten or a mix of both. And different zines use all kinds of artistic and crafting techniques, including collages, hand drawings, stickers, and photographs. You know, I could see a zine making activity as a great alternative to a standard report on a social justice topic for high school students. Middle schoolers could use zines to write a mini memoir that they can share with classmates. And grade schoolers could even learn about bookmaking by actually making one. Any of these can be done in a collaborative fashion that would help students flex their teamwork skills. Go team! Yes, absolutely. Zines are great for individual expression and also for collaborative projects. And historically speaking, zines have long been connected to creating a sense of community, bringing people together and making connections. Some people consider the history of zines to stretch back for centuries to the early decades of the printing press in Western Europe. Martin Luther often gets credit as the first zinester for using his self-produced publication, The 95 Theses, to call out corruption in the Catholic Church in 1517. Originally printed as a single sheet broadside like the one pictured here, Hundreds of copies were soon printed in pamphlet form and helped spark the Protestant Reformation throughout Europe. Here in the US, Thomas Paine's 1776 pamphlet, Common Sense, encouraged the colonies to fight for independence from Great Britain. And so this publication is sometimes considered the first American zine. Wow, so many important people throughout history have been zinesters. It's true. But it wasn't until the early 20th century that a variety of small press and underground publications started popping up and eventually led to the type of publication we now think of as zines. From the 1920s through the 1960s, writers, artists, and political groups used their self-created and self-distributed publication to get the word out about their ideas and share their work. They created artistic manifestos, underground political newspapers, poetry chapbooks, literary magazines, comic books, and science fiction fanzines. The independent and artistic spirit of these publications appealed to the do-it-yourself punk rock music scene of the 1970s. Musicians and fans started making their own publications about bands and punk culture and eventually, these fanzines became just known as plain old zines. Zines and zinesters continued to be associated with punk and underground music throughout the 1990s. 
These music-related zines helped spark what would become a zine explosion by the late 1980s and early 1990s when technology like photocopiers became widely used and allowed people to make and reproduce their own publications pretty easily and inexpensively. Oh my gosh, did you just say technology? <laughs> oh my gosh, I did say technology. <laughs> I love technology! From pen and paper to Rizzo printers, technology has had an impact on zine making and distribution. Early pamphlets certainly benefited from the invention of the printing press, making it possible to mass produce copies in a short period of time. This also meant the printed word was now available to more than just the wealthy. Always the domain of average citizens, zines didn't benefit from advances in technology until they became more widespread and affordable. Enter the mimeograph machine. You mean the thing with the crank handle and the blue ink? That's the one. This technology was used by zinesters until the late 60s when photocopiers became more easily accessible. Distribution was still low-tech at this point, with distros printing catalogs of zines that could be purchased and mailed. The next big jump in technology came when personal computers and laser and ink jet printers became more affordable. Add the internet on top of that, and zines could now be produced and distributed digitally. Never a pair of scissors or glue stick touched. So, is a blog a zine? Oh, this can be a contested discussion in zine <laughs> communities. However, most agree that blogs are not zines. There's a school of thinking about zines, even today, that the only real zine is an old-fashioned analog zine. Hey, have you heard about quarantine zines? Oh my gosh, I have! I've heard of libraries and organizations asking community members to submit pages for collaborative zines. Hey, you know, that reminds me, we haven't really talked about collaborative zines yet, have we? No, not yet. A collaborative zine is where individual authors submit pages on a topic or theme, and they're compiled into one zine or a series of zines. This makes collaborative zines a great tool for sharing a variety of voices, and in times of shared experiences, like a pandemic, they can be used to document those experiences. Right, and that is a great example of zines as primary sources, which might not be the first thing that comes to mind about why zines are great, but it's true. As we've seen, from the 1776 American Revolution to the 1976 punk rock revolution and beyond, zines are first-hand accounts that document different historical time periods, political beliefs, or cultural perspectives. And zines can be extra valuable because they often contain the voices of marginalized populations or of one person's experience of events that might not have been saved as part of the historical record otherwise. This photo shows just a small sample of the hundreds of zines dating from the 1980s and 1990s that we have in special collections and archives at Boise State. And we're not alone. Lots of other universities and colleges have zines in their archival collections, and some universities and public libraries have circulating collections of zines as well. So hey, why should students have to wait until college to learn about and make zines? You know, another reason why they shouldn't have to wait that long is because zines relate to anchor standards and learning outcomes for almost any grade level. So now I bet you're wanting to know how you can make your zine activities align with anchor standards, huh? I thought so. So let's talk about for K through fifth grade students, zine making addresses a number of college and career anchor standards for writing, such as write informative text to examine and convey complex ideas and information clearly and accurately through the effect of selection, organization, and analysis of content, like an animal zine for an elementary student. It also relates to the production and distribution of writing anchor standard. So along those lines, talking about producing clear and coherent writing in which the development, organization, and style are appropriate to task, purpose, and audience. For older students, so for 6th through 12th graders, zine making aligns with a number of college and career readiness anchor standards for reading. One of them being the ability to analyze the structure of texts, including how specific sentences, paragraphs, and larger portions of the text relate to each other and the whole. 
So hopefully that gives you a starting point for connecting zines to anchor standards and you're excited to share zines with your students. Thanks so much for joining us. This video was brought to you by the Idaho Commission for Libraries in collaboration with Albertson's Library at Boise State University. We would like to thank the Institute for Museum and Library Services who helped partially fund this project. Happy zine making everyone!